The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of my Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started from PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, roll the video. All right, before we get started, just doing a quick little shameless plug. My new book, mm, Do Not Call Me Sis. It is a new book that me and my friend wrote together, actually, named Amaya Janelle. It is a collection of essays about fandom, massage noir, ableism, entertainment, and white feminism. So if you're a fan of the work that I put on this channel, please give our book a chance. Currently, the physical copies are no longer in stock. They sold out. Thank you guys so much. But the digital copy and the audio book are there for purchase. I will be restocking the physical copies, but I'm not necessarily sure of when I want to do so. I'm trying to see if I want to wait during like Black Friday season and all that because y'all know that's when a lot of people really be spending more money on things and whatnot so i'm like do i want to wait until then or should i go ahead and restock them at the end of like october if you're interested in buying the physical copy please comment down below if you rather like wait all the way until like black friday season or you would want it more like towards the end of october i'm genuinely curious i would love to know but yeah the book is only available for purchase on my website harryannahook.com thank you now let's get on with today's video Many black girls can attest that at some point of our childhood, we were told this growing up. You have to work twice as hard to get half of what a white girl gets. And it's extremely true. By the way, I know black guys were told this growing up just as well, but the focus of this video is specifically about animation and black girls and black women to a certain extent. Because let's just be honest, while there are issues with black guys and men portrayed in animation, there are so many different issues with the girls because of this thing we call massage noir where anti-blackness and misogyny meet growing up the black leaders in our lives pushed us to be extremely smart and gifted not just because everyone needs to have like a basic education to get through life because yes you do need that you need to be educated but because they want us to be seen as exceptional Negroes. And if you're black, you probably understood what that meant. But if you aren't black, here we go. But what else is new? This is exactly what the concepts of exceptional Negro and model minority were intended to do. For African Americans, the exceptional Negro issue has been whether to accept white America's view of Michael Jordan or Frederick Douglass or Oprah Winfrey as, air quote, not the other blacks. They are told how vastly different they are from the normal, underachieving black where more than not fits the thug, deadbeat, welfare queen, poor, uneducated mold. When the middle class, educated, and accomplished African Americans have been willing to embrace the exceptional label, they then have been more prone to looking down on and ostracizing themselves from the air quote others that is those poor and uneducated blacks who do not share their quality, social status, or achievement. In reality, this group has had to grapple with the demand of African American cultural norms requiring them to unite against a common incisive racial oppression and degradation. I know you've been seeing the term respectability politics often on social media. So what is that you may ask? Respectability politics is a school of thought that uses respectability narratives or examples of marginalized individuals who follow the code of conduct of the majority to intact social change. Respectability politics aims to minimize the perspective differences between majority and marginalized individuals as well as a race perspective bad behavior, air quote, of marginalized people. While respectability politics can intact meaningful change, the approach ultimately harms underprivileged individuals by enforcing the dominant culture, erasing cultural uniqueness, and ignoring struggles. Origins of Respectability Politics The phrase, Politics of Respectability, first appeared in 1993, the work of African-American studies researcher Evelyn Brooks Higginbottom. 
Her book titled Righteous Disconnect, The Women's Movement in the Black Baptist Church, 1888 to 1920, identified respectability politics as a way for marginalized groups to attempt to gain favor and equal rights in mainstream society. So in my African-American studies class that I am currently taking this semester, we are studying Booker T. Washington, and the more we learn about him, the more I come to the conclusion that he is a contribution to why so many Black people feel as though they need to appeal to the white gaze to be treated well. Washington believed that the best interests of Black people in the post-Reconstruction era could be realized through education in the crafts and industrial skill and the cultivation of the virtues of patience, enterprise, and thrift. He urges his fellow Blacks, most of whom were impoverished and illiterate farm laborers, to temporarily abandon their efforts to win full civil rights and political power and instead cultivate their industrial and farming skills so as intact economy security. Blacks would thus accept segregation and discrimination, but their eventual acquisition of wealth and culture would gradually win for them the respect and acceptance of white community. This would break down the division between the two races and lead to equal citizenship for blacks in the end. In his epochal speech, September 18th, 1895, to the racial mixed audience in the Atlanta Exposition, Washington summed up his pragmatic approach in the famous phrase. In all things that are purely social, we can be separate as the fingers, yet one as the hand in all things essential to mutual progress. Listen, I do respect the good that Booker T. Washington has done for Black people, but I can't help but get upset with so many of his points because that led us to another set of issues. And usually when people talk about respectability politics, they are talking about Black women and sexuality or how Black women dress and talk. And I just want to talk about the other part of respectability politics, the one that has to do more so with talent and intelligence, because this is the main key where it comes to the air quote positive representation of black female characters in animation where they are the main focus. Yes. I have also found yet another reason to talk about the princess and the frog because I legit have not run out of things to say about this movie yet. So if you're watching my channel or if you've read any of my books before, you would see that I use a lot of profanity when I speak. And that is something that always just gets on my damn nerves when there is somebody that uses profanity. People were quick to say like, oh, you sound uneducated. But I noticed that this is differently when it comes to black people and when it comes to white people because a lot of times when white people cuss it's seen as like cool and edgy and trendy but then like if a black person is cussing up a fucking storm y'all are like oh you improper you ghetto don't do that yada 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 so what's that double standard about that what's that double standard there because oftentimes if i see a white person saying something and i see a black person saying something and they are using profanity the same point is getting across. It's just somebody decided to word it differently. When I'm reading writings written by white people and they use profanity, they're seen as like cool and edgy and whatnot. But if a black person chooses to use profanity in their work, it's seen as, oh, you're uneducated. You sound like you off the street. So let's talk a bit about this respectability politics right there because i noticed that there is this big ass double standard when it comes to the way animation wants to portray black girls and women too versus the white girls let's get on with it one thing that i have caught on to when it comes to black girls in animation is that they can never just be ordinary if they're one of the main characters and when i say ordinary it means they have to have something special about them people can't say and argue that pretty proud is like an ordinary black girl but she's not like if y'all have actually watched the proud family that girl was fucking famous at one point so that's the reason i'm like no anytime a black girl is the center focus of a series she has to be exceptional she has to be super talented she has to be super duper smart she has to be basically the hbic she has to be super duper hard working and whatnot she's not necessarily allowed to be mediocre this is if she is the main character 
And the biggest case of this that I have noticed recently would have to be with Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Mind you, I love Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. I truly do adore it. But this show made me realize that this really is like an ongoing trend that I notice when it comes to black girlhood and womanhood to a certain extent within animation. Because we are introduced to our main character of Moon Girl named Lanella Lafayette. She lives in New York. She lives in the Lower East Side specifically. She basically is what we will call to be like a prodigy she's extremely smart she's smarter than pretty much everyone in her school but it's funny with Lunella because she basically knows everything but then at the end of the day her decisions that she makes really shows her age like it's actually really bright it's actually really fucking funny but so much of the show is just them showing us that Lunella is smarter than everybody else in the room which is the entire purpose of her character, don't get me wrong. But growing up, because of how the world treats black girls, it is important that we have like a super duper smart main black girl character because that will give like the black girls that are viewing it the encouragement to, you know, go read and write and engage with STEM and whatnot. But also I noticed another thing with Moon Girl because while Casey, Lunella's best friend, Casey isn't black, she's still a girl of color. She is still seen to be as exceptional just as well. Now, when I say that Casey is exceptional, she's exceptional in a different way than Lunella. Like, Lunella is very, very, like, brain smart. She's textbook smart. She knows a lot about everything. Lunella is basically like a scientist. But when it comes to Casey, Casey is very tech savvy. She knows how to work social media and whatnot. And she's very, very talented when it comes to fashion design. She knows how to work a fucking sewing machine. She knows how to do so much when it comes to, like, you know, beauty beauty, makeup, fashion, hair, like both of them are seen to be a super duper great. And I'm glad that we do have that representation there for Casey just as well because oftentimes when it comes to brown Latina characters within our media, they're just kind of like pushed towards the back and they don't really get main focus. Oftentimes they are very much right passing. So that's why I appreciate Casey's color but it also just kind of like supports my argument of how not just black girls have to be seen as exceptional within animation but a lot of other girls of color too just as well but we're not talking about that we're focusing specifically on the black girls but I did want to sit there and talk a little bit more about Casey because I want to talk about her character more but that's a whole nother separate discussion because at the end of the day Casey's not black so moving forward from Casey the next character that I've noticed that I have talked about numerous times on this channel about how the show dealt with her to be super duper frustrating would have to be Susie Carmichael from All Grown Up specifically and in Rugrats. Now I remember specifically in Rugrats Chris Summer who is the voice actor of Susie specifically said that she wanted Susie to be like well spoken which is great because like I said there was not many black girls on, t on TV at the time of Susie's introduction on the TV at the time specifically for animation. So it was great that Susie was the good positive representation that we had there. Like I said, Susie was a, like another Lanella Lafayette type. But basically Lanella is like Susie on 10 I'd say because Susie is very smart. She's always on her shit. But also outside of her being very smart, she also sang. She was very talented musically wise, which is a good thing. Like I said, I'm not sitting here and saying that these great positive characteristics of these characters are bad things. The next person that we have to talk about, she's a lot older than these two characters right here, would have to be Princess Tiana. Hi, editing me here. I feel like I need to be a little bit more specific about why I included Princess Tiana in this video because I mentioned before that the Princess and the Frog is one of the few animated movies that are like you know popular that people have actually seen where a black woman is a main character yes princess tiana is an adult but her character was specifically created for black girls she is supposed to be a role model for black girls at the end of the day so i still sit here and say that princess tiana is a character that was made for black girls but i grew up with princess tiana i'm grown now like all black people like tiana but it's I mentioned she specifically was made for black girls here. The Princess and the Frog, like I mentioned in the introduction, there are just so many things about this movie that I just never run out of points to make about it. But Princess Tiana is seen to be, you know, 
exceptional just as well she seemed to be like a prodigy like Lunella and Susie she's extremely hardworking. she know how to throw down in the kitchen when it comes to culinary that is where Tiana's work shines the most like she's a businesswoman she is on her shit in the end of the movie she ended up getting her restaurant that she worked so freaking hard to get so moving forward from princess tiana we do have to bring up miraculous ladybug and that would have to be what alia cesare's character alia she's black stop trying to act like she's not y'all it was never said that she was indian get over it she's not indian y'all and i'm not even saying that to be rude it's just a lot of y'all just can't handle the fact that alia is black and y'all try to say that she's everything but black y'all need to do y'all fucking research on Martinique and y'all really do need to do your research on Ami Césaire yeah and then she's also named after Alia the singer a black woman but Alia is also seen to be like super duper talented just as well because she runs a blog called the lady blog and she basically is the one that keeps up with all the superhero news that goes on within Paris but I'm pretty sure she keeps up with it in other countries too just as well she runs all that shit by herself she literally be going out in public putting herself in dangerous situations to get the best material and content out there to share with the blog and to share on social media and whatnot so have y'all noticed that there is something the same that is going on with all four of these characters as i mentioned that black girls in animation can never be ordinary if they are one of the main characters and all four of those characters that i mentioned are either main characters of their stories or they're one of the main characters now it's a big difference between how these characters are portrayed. Mind you that there's still a lot of issues when it comes to the portrayal of Susie, Tiana, and Alia. Most definitely Alia. Ooh, I wrote about it in the book, y'all. Go check it out if you're interested. But here, if they aren't either, like they're not extremely talented or they're not extremely smart, they're not handled well or they're barely in the story. And if you guys are familiar with my content, y'all know why Hey Arnold pisses me off so much because this is what they do. Hey Arnold is a show, like I said, I don't really don't think black girls should have existed in it because of what they did with these girls was very frustrating most of the time when they would bring a black girl into this series she either just is in the background and doesn't really do much of anything or the writing for her character is a bit odd but when they do have a black girl where she is a bit of the focus for the show she's extremely villainized and made out to be a horrible fucking person and i recently talked about this with sharice I'm gonna have the link to that video down below if you guys haven't checked it out please check it out I worked hard on that but Sharice is basically a girl that played Jamie O she basically was like he is in love with me he's head over heels for me and because of that I'm gonna make him do all of this shit for me and one of those things had to be like her homework she literally was treating him horribly the entire episode but then we also have chloe chloe who go watch go watch she fans go watch she fans i'm gonna link both of them videos down below chloe is extremely villainized she basically is talking to gerald because she wants to get closer to his brother who is jamie up but people don't seem to realize that if this is going to be the only little portrayal of black girls within your show when you bring them into the story and treat them like extremely horrible people and not human that is where we have that issue like i said when black girls are not seen as like ordinary oftentimes in animation they either are pushed to the back or the story just villainizes them because i'm going to bring up one black girl that i think she was seen as ordinary and i truly did enjoy that with her but she doesn't really get that much shine and that would have to be miss little howling wolf i adore howling wolf she is my favorite monster high character ever of all time but she is like she attends girl failure university like she literally is a fucking girl failure from what i know howling's not super duper smart she's not super duper talented she's not even really popular and a lot of the people in the school just don't really like mess with her because they see her as like claudine's annoying little sister claudine and claude's annoying little sister because claude and claudine are basically super duper popular but howling is just kind of like 
a social outcast, I'd say. Halloween's not even really that much of an outcast, if we're being honest, but that is how the story portrays her to be. And there's an entire movie, I made a video about it, by the way, um, called Monster High 13 Wishes, and it was basically Howling's coming of age story. But basically, throughout this movie, we see that she is making really, really bad decisions because she's hurting. But also, I really did appreciate how the story basically humanized her at the end of all of it. It's clear that she was having a lot of personal battles with how she viewed herself she really didn't know how to handle people not really liking her or thinking that she was cool or whatnot she had so much self-care that she had to work on and part of the reason why this resonates me with, with me so much is because I was like that a lot when I was 14 years old I was so much like how Link's character and this movie makes me ugly cry but main reason why it makes me ugly cry is because this has to be one of the best portrayals of an unhinged black girl in animation that I have seen yet to this day. Yes, a Monster High movie did that shit. But you want to know what makes me kind of sad about this in the end? At the end of the day, when it comes to the Monster High lineup, Howleen is still a side character because Monster High 13 Wishes really is the only movie where she got her shine. She got her recognition. She's like appears in like a lot of other webisodes and whatnot. She makes appearances here and there without like within the series. But also at the end of the day, Howleen just isn't like seen as important to the story because she's ordinary. She's not super duper special like her older sister Claudine, who is one of the mains, who is one of the ones that is pushed towards the front. When it comes to merchandise and stuff like that, Claudine has so much shit, but Howleen doesn't even have half of what her older sister gets. So I hope I was able to get that point across as well as I could. If the black girl is not one of the main characters overall, she is either villainized and made out to be a very much despicable human being or the story handles her somewhat well and just doesn't do shit with her after a while. She's just pushed towards the back. Here is the part of identity politics that a lot of people seem to fail to understand why so much of it is irrelevant at the end of the day and that has to do with the fact that there's just white people in this world and not even just white people just non-black people of color too there are just people in this world that are not gonna respect you and they don't care how smart you are as a black person they don't care how talented you are as a black person they don't care about your artistry and they most definitely don't care about your contribution to the world some people will always find a way to disrespect a black person no matter if they're an exceptional negro or not it's not necessarily a problem where we have this talented black girl smart black girl representation within our media because it's important it's well needed but also it just kind of goes to show you that respectability politics coming into play there are white people in every single last one of these stories that disrespect this black girl or this black woman okay because Lunella is the first example Lunella being super duper smart did not stop that white girl from being rude as fuck to her about her hair and I'm glad Casey put that girl in check too Susie being super duper smart and talented did not stop Angelica from being a horrible fucking friend to her. Tiana being an amazing chef did not stop that white man from being awful to her when she was trying to buy the damn property for the restaurant. Alia being extremely tech savvy and running a successful blog did not stop Chloe from getting her expelled from school. And with me being extremely respectful to this one artist booth that I went up to in the artist alley did not stop her from being racist towards me about my cosplay when she didn't even realize it. Okay, y'all need some context. Okay, I talked about this before, but basically I had did Cat Blanc cosplay. It's basically like a white version of the Cat Noir costume. Um, and I was talking to her about like Miraculous Ladybug and whatnot because I noticed that she had like a lot of Miraculous Ladybug art and I was like oh I did that cosplay before because she had a picture of Cat Blanc and I was like yeah I wore it yesterday but I didn't come up to your table yesterday so I'll pull it up and I'll show you a picture of it. I basically show her a picture of my Cat Blanc cosplay and she was like hmm that's the first time I ever saw a Rena Rouge costume done in white. If you don't understand why that was wrong, just know that Rena Rouge is black and her color's orange. Anyway, like I said, 
no matter how kind you are to a white person no matter how smart you may be and smarter than them to a certain extent no matter how talented you are there are just white people in this world that's gonna disrespect the black person and they're gonna find a way to do so oftentimes they don't even realize it you being an exceptional negro is not gonna stop how people are going to treat you horribly regardless of how they view you or regardless of how you choose to present yourself and this isn't even a thing of talking about having respect for yourself and knowing how to act in public and having etiquette and manners and all that no absolutely fucking not this is not that because at the end of the day if i'm over here sitting here being kind to everyone being nice and a white person or just not even a white person anybody is still rude to me that just goes to show you that respectability politics suck I'm sorry, but you being seen as an exceptional Negro is not going to stop a lot of white people from being racist towards you. Now, I'm going to read a few of these notes word from word and, you know, give my thoughts and opinions on them. But just because you're an exceptional Negro, that would not take away from the fact that non-black people will still be talking to you out of their ass. But also, this is just contributing to the entire conversation and discussion that I have started up where I said animation has a white man problem. And it's not even just animation. It has to do with publishing too, just as well. That's why I'm really more interested in finding more independently published comic books and all of that stuff in indie animation shows. Because I feel like going to indie animation and going to indie comics and all that is basically where I'm going to get like the best representation. Because you want to know why because it is made by the people themselves wanting to tell their own stories but like I said it just goes to show you that black people really should tell their own stories because that's the most ethical way to portray it and that's part of the reason why I really do like the portrayal of the black girls within Craig of the Creek they're just normal girls that the story doesn't villainize. That's why I was so happy to see that Jessica got her own spinoff series. I really often have to give my props to Craig of the Creek because they are doing what 90% of the animation industry are failing to do. And mind you, when it comes to Alia, mind you, Alia character need work, but she's still seen as like a positive black role model for the people watching the show. Read the book, y'all. Read the book. There's an entire essay about how I go off about the problems with Alia's character. But you know, we have Tiana, we have Lunella, and we have Susie. All of these characters are really good mo role models for young girls, which is a good thing because black girls do need stories where they are painted out into being where they are painted out to be in a very positive light. I get that, but I feel like that shouldn't be the only thing we show when it comes to black girlhood. Because oftentimes in All Grown Up, we did get to see Susie break down and get frustrated or whatever, but oftentimes it really just fell flat because so much of the discomfort that Susie was facing, I saw that one episode where she just took on so much. I really liked that episode, by the way. I highly recommend it. But so much of the stress in Susie's life is just caused by Angelica. I really wish animation would give black women a space to tell the stories about being flawed that is part of the reason why i like howling's character so much but mind you howling was created by white people let's go ahead and say that and seeing that they were able to tackle her story well was brilliant like they outdid themselves there right then but then again, that's the most we've ever really seen of Howling to begin with. The story just like kind of threw her away and pushed her to the side afterwards. But also playing into that, you saw how different the story of Monster High treated her because she wasn't special. She was shoved in the back most of the time. That is why we need more black women working in animation telling their own stories because I feel like they will be handled much much better because it is coming directly from the affected party. But also I kind of would like for these stories to be told more specifically for an adult audience. Animation overall is severely lacking when it comes to black women working behind the scenes, but it is very lacking when it comes to adult animation. It's like we barely even exist in that space right there, on screen specifically. Part of the reason why I appreciate Moon Girl so much is because they actually get to show us that Lunella, while she is super duper smart and talented, she's very much flawed and she has a lot to work on as a person. And that's okay. For every story we get about a Lunella Lafayette, we gonna get 50 more about a little white girl. 
that's very much mediocre. And when I say a mediocre white girl, I mean that she is just ordinary. There are so many series out here, animated especially, that are just about ordinary white people and they just go by and do whatever. When a black girl is the main character, when she is the main focus or one of the main characters, she has to be brilliant. And I hate that because I sit here and I think back to a lot of like the Disney princesses where it feels like there wasn't anything special about a lot of them. They were just simply a princess because they were born into that. Princess Tiana had to work her ass off to get to where she was. And anybody that knows me knows that Sleeping Beauty is one of my top three movies of all time. It's literally my favorite animated movie ever. I adore that shit. It is a white ass story, but I love it, okay? But let me tell you, Aurora, there's nothing special about her. Absolutely nothing. But she got to have an entire story focus around her. And while I would say Aurora is not necessarily the main character of Sleeping Beauty, because even though she is Sleeping Beauty, even though she is the title character, she's not necessarily in it that much but the story still surrounds her. She's very much ordinary. The only thing that is special about Aurora is that she's a princess. Okay, that's pretty much it. I want more drama material about black women not being perfect and not abiding to the respectability politics that animation has for us to be seen as people, to not villainize us within the story. Because if we're not seen as exceptional, the story belittles us. That is why Hey Arnold's portrayal of black girls accepts me so bad. And I'll go far to even say that this was an issue within my life as a teenage robot too. I adore my life as a teenage robot, one of my favorite shows watching growing up, and Brit and Tiff, I personally think they are black. I think they are two black cousins. Tiff was just light skinned. I never viewed her as white ever. I always thought she was a light skinned black girl, mainly because she was voiced by Cree Summer, who is a biracial black woman that voices all of like the black characters in so many of our childhood shows. Hi, editing me here. Even if Brit and Tiff aren't black, I always viewed them as black. They are still very much of color. They are still girls of color and they are still villainized within the series heavily. And we can also pull the colorism card too when it comes to Brit. Because Brit was like one of the meanest characters in the show, but guess what? She was also one of the darkest ones. So yeah, they, it still applies here. Also, one more quick note about this, about how respectability politics applies to Brit and Tiff's characters. We aren't necessarily meant to like Brit and Tiff because they are two of the antagonists to Jenny, the main character of the show. The girls, while they may be well off, like they're pretty wealthy, they have new outfits all the freaking time. They're one of the few characters in this show that constantly didn't wear the same thing all the time. Just because they had money didn't take away from the fact that they were very much rude as fuck. They were nasty, mean, conniving ass bitches. Not only were Brit and Tiff villains, they were also a part of the supporting cast of this show. This just goes to show you that within a lot of these animated series, if the black girl isn't a part of the main cast like Susie was, they either make her bland as hell and just have her thrown to the side and doesn't really do much of anything with her, or they just villainize her. They make her an extremely despicable human being. In another big case of this by Nickelodeon when it comes to respectability politics and black girls would have to be Miranda from As Told by Ginger. This gotta be one of the worst cases of this shit. There was absolutely nothing special, nothing exceptional about Miranda. She was just mean. And she was one of the most unlikable characters within the show. Animation honestly is failing black girls, but they're also failing black women too by not letting them in the writer's room and contributing to these stories because we have to be seen as borderline perfect or super duper amazing in order to be the main character. And if we're not, we're pushed to the side and the story decides to make us just awful as human beings. Because I can even go ahead and attest that Danny Phantom did this shit with Valerie too just as well and the treatment of her character makes me so upset because Valerie is pretty much villainized throughout the entire run but we do get to sympathize with her we do get to see how Danny basically indirectly ruined her life and she really didn't even know that but also sometimes it just felt like this show 
kept finding ways to pick on Valerie and just make things worse for her. The entirety of Valerie Gray's story is that she's just a black girl in pain. And mind you, I am somebody that thinks that black pain stories are important. I am not one of those black people that thinks we need to abolish all black pain stories. But then again, do not have your only black character in your story to be focused on black pain. But also y'all need to start letting black people, black people that know how to write well specifically, contribute to these characters. Start letting them write for their own characters. Start letting them make their own shows because I'm tired. Like I said, for every moon girl we get, there's going to be a series about a very mediocre white person that comes along with it. And I'm just drained. I'm just tired of it. I know that there are a lot of new shows coming up about like black girls and whatnot specifically one that is about this black girl superhero team and yes it is important that we see a black girl superhero team and I will be watching it I still have it like on my watch list but it just kind of just goes as far to make me think that whenever we get something we just have to be super duper exceptional we have to be like exceptional Negroes to a certain extent. Why? Can we get a Black Pepper Ann, please? I am begging for like a Black Pepper Ann where it's just a series about a super duper normal girl, very much ordinary. I want a series like that where a Black girl is not all that super duper talented and she's not super special or anything like that. She's just a girl. I want a series about a Black woman that isn't super duper skilled at fighting or gaming or watching TV and all of that. Honestly, a show about a Black woman who is a great gamer would slap. I'm pitching that. Somebody do that, please. That's a great thing. Honestly, if we do get a show about a black woman, I honestly don't even care at this point. She can be ordinary, she can be super duper smart, she can be super duper talented. Just give us something. Just give us something to work with because we all got shit over there. <laughs> like we had 20 something, 20 something over seven minutes long. I feel like a lot of people just don't seem to realize that respectability politics isn't just simply one thing because I noticed this entire discussion has been surrounding Sexy Red. But I was like, no, it literally affects so much of the portrayal of blackness within animation and we need to talk about it. And guess what? I am the channel that does that. I specifically always want to talk about black girls in animation and black women in animation and all of that. But it's just kind of sad because you realize we're just severely lacking in this category. <laughs> That's pretty much all I got to say for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are interested in the book, like I said, the physical copies are out of stock. If you guys are interested in purchasing it at the end of October, comment down below. But if you're interested in waiting until Black Friday to get that, comment down below because I genuinely would like to know. But if you don't want to wait and you want the digital copies like the ebook or the audio book, you can go ahead and get that then. The link to that will be down below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and have a great day or night or whatever time of the day you're watching this. I'm just thankful that you watched it with the ads on. All right, thank you, goodbye. Now, now that you see, you should be aware of the power of three. They come to fight as fast as they can. They're dangerous, yet fabulous. Because the Utonia made them a shoe. They are the colors of pink, green, and blue. They'll catch you in the blink of an eye and do it all before the time. They come in through and fight in, oh. and everyone they shot in. Oh. You know, no one can stop them all because of the chemical X. Oh. They come in through and they come in through. and everyone they shot in. You know. Just blow your mind Buttercup like villains three at a time Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt And blossom will lead them out of their rut Cherishing power puff two of a kind Both wanna save the world before bad times From Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA The Powerpuff Girls are just here to stay They coming through and fighting And everyone they shocking You know no one can stop